don't think you're alone. You can, you can do this, you know, reach out, ask for help. But not much, we said it all. <laughs> Hey everyone, Alex here from Scale My Cleaning Business, where we help cleaning owners scale and reach their desired outcomes and goals. Today, I have with me Gabriella, who has been in business for about seven years. She started her cleaning business in 2015, and right now is actually traveling while running her cleaning business in an RV, which is really cool. But before we get into all that fun stuff, I want to first just thank you for coming on to the podcast and just sharing your story, sharing some insights that you've, you've uh, discovered along the way. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. How did you actually start building your business? Was this the first business that you started or how did you get started with all of this? Yeah, so it's quite interesting, our story. So my husband and I, um, I worked in property and property management, just in a leasing office, renting out apartments. And, and I did that from the time I was 18 to the time I started my business. This is my first business, um, actually starting and running and scaling it. So, um, when I worked for an apartment community, uh, maybe about over six years ago, my husband, um, Jose, he was unemployed at the time and um, the community I was working for needed, needed a cleaning company to come in and clean the units, uh, you know, to get them ready for the next, next tenant that would come in. And so my husband was like, well, why don't I clean these apartments? And I'm like, honey, first you need to learn how to clean our apartment before we can get you to clean other people's apartment, right? <laughs> So um, he was like, no, but I'm serious. Like we can, I can do this. And I'm like, well, um, if you're really thinking about, you know, getting this done, you were not, our, you know, our, my boss is not just going to hire a random, a random stranger to come and clean. So you need to be a legit business. You need to have a liability insurance. You need to have your business registered with the Riverside County because we're from California. And, uh, you know, you need to provide us with a quote on how much, you know, you're going to charge us for the different units. And he's like, okay, so um, obviously, you know, he was unemployed. I think he borrowed like a thousand dollars from his mom uh, just to like get all the paperwork ready and buy a couple cleaning supplies. And so um, I was the assistant manager um, running the office solo because uh, my bosses were from out of, out of town. And um, they, they're always the type of people that are like, okay, you need to get three quotes. And then the one with the cheapest would be the one that would get it. So obviously I had the insight and I told them, okay, go ahead and charge this price and we'll see what we can do and then we'll get you in. So that's what happened. He won the bid and he got in. Obviously we were trying to keep it separate. We didn't tell him that that's my husband or anything like that, right? But um, so there was 240 units in that apartment community. Then, um, I had my baby. I actually, so she's six years old now. So I had her at the time. And so I came back from maternity leave back to work. And so my, the, my boss led, laid me off on my second day back. He wanted me to move out of my uh, units. And uh, he also let my husband go as the cleaner. So we were kind of stranded at that time. And uh, we had no jobs. You know, we had a newborn. We had no place to live. We, I barely was um, getting my disability and, and uninsurance. And so with that, we were able to qualify for like a tiny 600 square feet apartment that we had to move into. And, um, you know, and at that time I was like, I, I just had a newborn. So I'm like, I don't want to have to go back to work and pay a sitter to just, you know, work to pay off a sitter. So I try to just kind of, you know, help him out. And obviously, um, you know, he was still in the cleaning industry trying, trying to get customers. And so we signed up with Angie's List and tried to get a couple customers. And so I would, when I wasn't, um, when I found somebody that could help me with the baby, I would kind of step in and help him clean houses. But it was just mostly him trying to do it on his own and trying to find people that could help him and I was more like you know trying to, just to support him in that 
Um, just, but once we got our daughter to go into daycare, so we needed to wait till she was two, um, we got her into daycare. And so at that time she was fully on and I'm like, okay, well, let's get this going. Let's, let's get, you know, let's get, let's build this business. Let's, you know, let's make it something bigger than what we've ever imagined and what, you know, let's scale it. And so I've, you know, looked into places and, you know, people that I can get help from and kind of making it more running as an actual business and not just have a self-employed job for the rest of my life. Because although the self-employed was fun, I could control my schedule. I could control when I wanted to clean, when I didn't. That a little bit of freedom was just good to have, not having a boss to tell you when to work, when not to work, if you can work weekends or not. That was nice enough, but I'm like, okay, we need to make it something bigger. So um, I looked into different coaching programs and different people that could help me and along the way. And I found um, something that I put my whole heart and effort and we invested in. Um, and from there, we, I think we, so we started that in 2018 so that's four years ago. And uh, from there, we got what we needed to pretty much scale it to where we are now. Um, and so it's important to have someone if because if, I, I, I had two options really to go about it. I could either either I could either do it myself and wait 10 years because I would have to go through trial and error to learn the things or I would hire this person that obviously, you know, it was a big sacrifice because we got into debt or hire this person. And within five years, I can, you know, make my money back and scale it, you know, which I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'm still going to go through trial and error, but this person already figured it out. So I'm not going to have to figure it out on my own. I have this person who's going to help me along the way. So I got smart enough to hire somebody from the beginning because starting a business is not easy. I mean, obviously there are going to be challenges along the way. And um, this is something where, you know, it was do or die. I'm not going to, you know, try my, you know, up all my energy because it's hard. It's hard. And I felt, I felt like giving up so many times. I was so close to just throwing in the towel and getting a regular job and I have to worry about it and I have to be in debt or anything like that. And cause I know I could go back to doing property management. So I'm thinking, you know, it's like, I could do this, but you know, it was just, it, you know, it was just hard, but I'm glad that I did that because now we're in a better place and I have the opportunity to lead others along the way. So um, that's, I guess, just our story. <laughs> just out of curiosity with those moments where you felt like giving up, you felt like throwing in the towel, what kept you from doing that? What was it? What were the thoughts that were going in your head and how did you kind of keep pushing through those moments? Well, you know, I think that during those moments, it's important to not isolate yourself and to reach out to friends because I remember reaching out to a friend and who was also in my industry and they were like, don't do it. It's you're going to regret it. You know, if you give up and get a regular job, you're never going to scale. And so that kind of kept me from, you know what, I can't. And it was funny because I actually already had gotten the job. It was my first day I needed to go into work. It was my first day. And I didn't want to live with that regret. So I'm like, I called in and I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to make it to work. And just kind of like, you know, kept kept on riding the wave. And I know it's going to get better. And just, we just needed to have a little bit of hope and be patient. And, you know, everything was going to work out. Yeah, it's uh, it can be scary, right? In the very beginning, because if you just have, you know, maybe one or a couple of accounts and you lose one and then it's, it's, it's a huge impact as opposed to if you have a hundred and then you lose one or even employees, you know, with, with that side of things. So um, amazing how you kept pushing and you saw that long-term vision for you and the company, not just when they're not within the next couple of months, but within the years to come, you know, five years versus 10 years. I thought that was interesting how you, how you brought that up and you just have that long-term way of thinking. Did you, have you always thought that way? Like in terms of, always trying to see that vision and plan for like the longer term. Where did you get that from? Do you think? Um, I've always had an entrepreneur spirit. Um, 
from the time, you know, I got out of high school, I've always wanted more. And I know I want I could achieve more if I really put my heart and effort into it. Um, and so for me, giving up is, it didn't come easy. I mean, I've, before I got into like property management, selling insurance, um, you know, trying to like sell investments and stuff like that. And, you know, there come times where I wanted to quit too, but I'm like, I kept pushing and, you know, I got promoted, but, you know, eventually, you know, I had to quit because it just wasn't bringing in the money. But, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to just let go so easily. But I think a lot of it has to do with like your mindset, you really got to feed your mind. And I know that during that, when we first started our business, um, just getting it off the ground, is just super hard. And so I really needed to just feed my mind, feed my, my spirit, feed my body with, you know, just kind of eat healthy exercise, um, just trying to live like holy in all aspects of my life, because challenges will come your way and you know we just got to make sure that we're ready for those battles because if it were easy everybody would be doing it right and it's not so we gotta just really work on ourselves I think when you're just starting out you really just gotta feed yourselves with good content podcasts motivational videos you know exercise eating right because and then giving your body the break that it needs not working overloading your yourself because you know that you're not going to find rest in that either so you know when you put yourself first in the beginning you're going to be so much better you're going to make better decisions along the way and for your future so that's what I did I you know I'm more of that, you know, I like to journal, I like to write things down, I like to write my goals, and I like to go and achieve them by, you know, doing one action at a time. Uh, My husband's the opposite. I'm more like, go, 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 go. And he's like, okay, slow down. Like, let's think about this. Let's process this, you know, and I'm like, no, you're too slow. Come on. (laughs) So we balance each other out. Yeah, that's something that I think is uh, often overlooked. And I wish I spoke to you when I was you know, starting out you know, years and years ago. And uh, it is important with, you know, your health and your diet. Um, there was kind of, at least for me, there was this thought of, you know, I'm going to make a bunch of money and then I'll figure out all those things out after when I have more time and, you know, I can devote more to that when everything is kind of running itself. But it's actually the opposite. You're body is kind of this engine that drives the growth of your business. So having a good uh, mindset as well as well-being and being able to do things to prepare for those uh, so, so-called battles kind of that you brought up, there's always going to be challenges, right? whether you're making, you know, five month, 5,000, 50,000, 500,000, there's always going to be challenges and there's like, yeah, there's the same more money, more problems, which is true, you know, in some ways. But I think that's amazing advice, especially for anyone who is starting out. Um, and it seems like for you, you found healthy eating, journaling. Uh, is there anything else you would recommend? That, uh, or, I know you said podcasts are great. Uh, anything else you'd recommend to, to someone who's starting out and might be facing challenges and you know it is a little bit difficult especially in the beginning yeah six months or eight months ago um or maybe about a year now but you know something i learned that really just kind of transforms my way of thinking and that's given me the ability to do what i'm doing now which is full-time ravine and exploring every state and learning what the world has to offer you know uh was being able to let go of control because you are not in charge of everything that goes around you. You're not. People are going to do their own things. Uh, Customers are going to leave you. Um, You know, people are going to talk bad. And those things are out of your control, right? And, or, you know, situations where happened where, you know, you did a job and it didn't work out to be, you know, you know, something happened along the way and you broke something or technicians broke something, whatever, right? It's out of your control. All you can really focus on is things that you could control. So I, and, and I, you know, I believe in God and 
the higher power. And I know there's, you know, like God is watching over us. And so I had to, I grabbed the, I bought a board, a whiteboard, and I wrote in the middle, I, I wrote a, a line right in the middle and I put, okay, what are things that I can control and what are things that God can control, right? If we put our faith and hope and trust in him. And I was like, you know what? I cannot control who comes into my business. I cannot control the type of employees that would come in. God can, I cannot, but I can do my very best to take care of those people who are under my wing, who are under my uh, leadership, right? So I'm going to do the best that I can as a leader. I can control that. I can control myself. I cannot control the customers who are coming, that are, that are going to come into my business, right? Who's going to be paying me a certain amount of money. I cannot control that. God could, but I can control how I take care of my customer. I can control uh, being able to give that 100% satisfaction, right? By bringing it down and, and sharing with my team and giving them hope and inspiration, right? I cannot control what uh, my investments will be. So if I spend a little bit of money here in my marketing or in this area or in this area, I cannot control if it's going to bring me a return on my investment, right? God can, I cannot. But if I'm wise with my budget and if I'm wise with how I spend my money, you know, I have control over that, right? So just kind of separating the two and deciding what can I control and what can, you know, what can I not control and give those things to God. Why? Because when things, when bad things happen, which I've experienced even traveling on the road, I've had people quit. I've had, um, you know, customers leave us. I've had, you know, things happening. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry, but those things are out of my control. I can only do the best that I can. And, and if I have faith in God, he's going to work those things out for our good. Let God do his job and let me do my job. You know what I mean? Just having that mindset, because when you have the mindset, it's like, I'm pretty sure God has a way better plan than I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, just kind of having hope and faith because things are going to work out, you know, just believe that things are going to work out for your good because that's what the Bible says. And I believe in that promise. So I'm going to stick to that word. So I think it's when you really involve him in your business, you'll see that dynamic change, you know, where it's like, it's like, and even he, even the journey I'm in now, you know, it's like, we're taking leaps of faith every single day. And I don't understand how business owners say, oh, I don't believe in God, or I don't believe in this. It's like, you don't believe in God, but every single day you're taking leaps of faith because you don't know when your next customer is going to come from. You don't know where your next sale is going to come from. Everything in business is about faith. You know what I mean? You're, you're putting your money into something that it's going to hope to work. You're putting your time and effort into something that you hope it's going to work. So how is it that you're not going to involve God in your business? It just makes no sense. So for me, I decided to do that from the very beginning. And, you know, I let, I've seen God, his hand move in every step of the way where it's like, God, you have the power over this. I don't. So you know what? While I let you focus on this. I'm going to go and be with my family and have peace of mind that, you know what? You are in charge and just kind of unwind and let him do his job. So that's where I stand. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And that's what's helped me, you know, take the sleep of faith of where I am now. It's very powerful to be able to separate your emotions from the outcome, because a lot good or bad, the outcome is not always in your control, even if you want to think that it is or you hope that it is. There's so many things, there's so many variables in life that are like, for example, if a client leaves, there's so many reasons why a client might leave that are might actually have nothing to do with you. Uh, they might not tell you that, but it's uh, but it's those that ability to make those decisions and also have that balance that is going to make this journey so much easier for so many people. And it would have made my journey a lot easier, especially in the first two years, if if I had that type of uh, thought process. So that's cool that you kind of started out with the way that you started out. Um, and then because of that, you're able to live how you're living right now, which by the way, sounds pretty cool. 
Uh, you're basically how by the way, how long have you been doing the uh, the RVing for? I meant to ask. Yeah, so we moved into an RV. We sold everything, our cars, we got rid of our house, everything that we owned. Um, we, we bought a fifth wheel. It's a 39 feet fifth wheel. We have two girls, uh, 13 and six. And so we decided to homeschool them. They were in private school. And so we decided to homeschool them and we got this RV uh, maybe like in April of this year. And as soon as they got out of school, we're like, okay, let's go. Um, let's go see what the world has to offer. Um, I do want to buy property somewhere. I don't know where yet. We're kind of scoping each area to see what's going to be good for our family. Um, you know, and, and, and actually franchise our business. We're looking to franchise and open up other locations. And so that's, that growth is going to come with us exploring what each state has to offer. But um, it's been interesting so far. We've been actually full time in here. Um, we left California three weeks ago, and we just uh, we made it to New Mexico. We're in Albuquerque now, and after this, I don't know where we're gonna go. We're just still trying to decide if we're gonna go up north or if we're gonna keep going east. Uh, we don't know yet, but it's it's interesting. You know, we'll we'll see what you know God has for us. <laughs> decisions to to be making you know so that's uh really cool is there a good view where you're sitting right now is there a way to maybe see it real quick you can uh yeah let me see if i can i can show you here hold on oh, okay. so uh, it's kind of okay. because of the sun it's kind of glare. Uh -oh. it's, it's okay. just all yeah. desert and okay. i have an rv in front of me but um yeah, it's just kind of desert area because we're in New Mexico. So we're staying in this RV park that it, it's just kind of like away from the city, like 15 minutes away from the main city. And so it's just kind of quiet, like desert area here. But it's beautiful coming out here. Uh, if you guys ever come, the mountains, the canyons are really pretty. Yeah, I'll definitely have to connect you uh, after this with our coach, Carrie. She just got an RV, did something very, she's doing something very similar, and she's also doing franchising. So I'll have to connect you with her. The thing we found with a lot of cleaning owners is not just the goal of increasing revenue and being able to grow, uh, you know, bring on more team members, bring on more accounts, but also just at the same time of growth, also being able to free their time because running a cleaning business is not easy. Um, there's a lot of moving parts on the operational side, uh, supplies, equipment, team members, and you, you know, finding and attracting the right talent. And of course, marketing and, and that side as well. Really cool how you've been able to put yourself in a position where you're still running the business, you're still overseeing everything, but you're physically not tied down to the operations and what's required of the business to grow and maintain itself. Uh, any pieces of advice that you have for being able to achieve that as you continue to grow and being able to also free up your time and automate and systemize and delegate all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I would just say that one, uh, my last piece of advice is that if you keep doing the right thing in your business, your business is going to be set up for to grow automatically year by year. Okay. And so you kind of just have to don't get too involved when things don't go your way, because you have to understand you just got to move on and, and see what you've learned, you know, take, you know, take those challenges as a learning lesson and keep moving on and say, okay, next time I will do it this way. But um, don't get too caught up in the problem because problems are going to come daily and you just got to keep going and try not to make the same mistake. But understand that if you've been in business for a while or if you plan on being in business for a while, your business is going to grow no matter what you do. As long as you, you know, have the right mentality and try to do what's right, you know, your business could continue to scale as long as you put those systems into place and reach out and find out ways that, you know, you can get help in, you know, and just there's so much, there's so much stuff out there online nowadays on YouTube and internet and facebook that you know you're not alone there's so many people doing this and you know ask for help well but it's it's true you can ask for help from anyone there's so many even just on facebook there's i don't even know how many pain groups there are there's 
dozens, maybe not hundreds, probably probably dozens, right? You and I met in a group called Not Another Cleaning Group, I think it was called, right? Which I thought was yeah. a, an interesting name. I like the name. But because uh, it's just, you know, there's so many, right? There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, reach yeah, out for help. Like, I mean, going off of what you said, I mean, a lot of these problems, other people are experiencing the exact same problems. And that's even why with uh, the, the group setting that we do, uh, it's been helpful because some people will be struggling with the same thing. And people, and also someone who solved that problem can help others plus, you know, with our support and everything like that. So it's just, to just have people in your circle that are going maybe at your level as well as beyond is good for any type of business. Like even for us, uh, well, this was actually a, a program that we did and same thing. We invested, you know, made some sacrifices. And then within that year we tripled. So just, you know, continuing to do that and be open to new ways of doing things and being flexible and seeking out help. Um, I think those are great words of advice. So uh, I'm glad that you shared that because it's important for pretty much any business, I would say. And I think, you know, everybody, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that have a heart to help because they've been in those situations and just sending them a private message. Hey, uh, I see that you own a cleaning business. How's it going with you? There's so many people who will reach out ahead and they're not afraid to help you along the way. And, you know, you just have to find what works for you and, and find somebody that maybe it's at your level or a little bit higher. And, you know, they, they want to. They want to make you, you know, make sure that you're successful. They want to be a part of your journey. And, you know, and I've met people that are like, I don't have Facebook. And I'm like, how do you not have Facebook? Like, you need to be on Facebook, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I encourage them, like, seek, you know, people are there. They're, they're there for, for you, really, because they want to help. So, yeah. There's so yeah. many out there. Uh, so you're traveling, basically, the, the States. Uh, and you're looking into franchising. What are the next steps for you? Um, well, we're taking it one step at a time. Um, we've definitely been wanting to start other, other businesses as well, um, along with, you know, finding a good area for us to build our home and uh, franchise and, you know, have a second business. We just started this, you know, about we left three weeks ago, so we're trying to figure out what we're going to do next within the next five years. But it takes time, even living here in the full time RV, it takes time to get adjusted um, to getting yourself into a rhythm of things. So it's just, you know, trying to adjust with a routine and time frames and with kids. So we're just trying to take it one step at a time and try not to rush so much, but kind of trust the journey and, you know, just enjoying every moment. Um, but we definitely have plans for other businesses and expanding and growing. So we'll see what happens. What kind of, uh, what kind of businesses? Is it related to cleaning or? Well, for me, um, I've been thinking because I've had people in my area reach out to me that need help. So I'm thinking of uh, starting a coaching business. So I'm some, I have something in the works for that, um, that I can help them. And it's more in the Spanish market because um, there's a lot of people, like Mexicans or, you know, just, you know, Spanish people who are in the cleaning industry, but they have no clue how to get started. So I'm thinking about putting something together in that market. Um, I can tell you that firsthand, uh, the way they do business in Mexico is not, at all similar to how they do it in the US. Uh, we worked with some people down in Mexico and I lived down there. So it was like night and day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a different different. Case. yeah, it's definitely different. No, and I don't mean going to Mexico or, or even doing anything out there outside of the US. I'm just saying there are people. Uh, who are you know with the language where they understand english they're just afraid yeah. to speak it but it's like they clean houses but it, but they want to get to you know running a business and i know they can't i've met people that have done it so it's like you just have to have a system you know so kind of like helping them with that uh, because i know there isn't a lot in like the spanish uh area i mean for people that live here you know but 
uh, yeah. there isn't a lot in the Spanish area. So I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of cleaner, uh, a lot of cleaning owners that you know speak Spanish. Uh, I've come across a lot of Portuguese as well. Um, and yeah, actually, those those are two big. Um, yeah, from at least from what we've seen, but that's that's really cool. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, well, uh, to kind of close a little bit, uh, wanted to thank you again uh, for sharing all of your experiences, your journey. I think it's a very interesting journey. Um, and just going through all of this over the last seven years and kind of just breaking it down, how you've been able to continue to adapt and grow and just share your advice for anyone, especially who's, uh, who's starting out. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to any cleaning owners out there? Maybe they feel a little bit stuck. They're trying to grow their business. Just don't think you're alone. You can, you can do this. You know, like, reach out. Ask for help. But not much. We said it all. <laughs> awesome. Well, if there's any Spanish speakers, uh, I want to allow them to get in touch with you as well, or just anyone in general. Uh, is there a good way to have people get in touch? I can just put it in the links below. Um, yeah, they can text me. I am happy to give you my phone number and you guys can text me anytime. I'm happy to help. But uh, yeah, thank you again for coming on here. Really appreciate you sharing your journey. Uh, this has been great. Thank you so much, Alex, for having me. Appreciate you.